graphical interfaces in MATLAB or GUIs. Um, there's a very useful function in MATLAB called guide that allows you to make very simple GUIs. So just type in guide, and press enter. And uh, here you can create a new GUI. Um, and press OK. So what shows up is a blank figure that uh, you can drag and drop existing uh, graphical interfaces to create your own. So for example, you can put buttons onto your GUI. Uh, you can also put text boxes. Okay, like so. Uh, so for this week, I'm gonna show an example of a very simple adding machine. Uh, so we're gonna have two edit boxes where we can input values and then a push button that's an equal sign that'll give us a solution after we input the values we want to add. And uh, we'll have a addition sign in the middle where we can uh, to show that it's an addition operation. So if you right click on one of your boxes. So for this, let's just click on the te static text box and click on property inspector. You can go down to change the string that's displayed in the property. So right now it's just displaying the word static text. I want it to be an addition sign. So put addition sign there. And right now the font is gonna be very small. So I just press enter and close this. The addition sign is extremely small. So I can make it bigger in the property inspector just by changing the font. So let's make it 40. And I'm gonna make the background character white for this. Okay, so now we have a big addition sign here. And uh, we'll change our values in our edit text also. So if you go to property inspector, We'll do the same thing here. Uh, right now the string shows edit text. We don't want anything since we want the user to input numbers in this box. And uh, we're gonna change the tag to A. So the tag is basically the variable name or the variable name that represents this graphical unit. And in this case, we're just gonna say it's equal to A. And uh, again, we'll make the font a little bit bigger. Let's make it 20 make the background light blue. Okay. Uh, oops, I'm gonna change it. Make it light blue. Okay. I'll we'll do the same thing for our second edit text where the user can input the second number they would like to add. So again, I'm going to make the string blank and change the tag this time to the variable name B. Okay. And change the color light blue again. And the font to 20. Okay push button is going to be an equal sign. So the user will push on the equal sign to perform the addition operation. And this, we can leave the tag as it is here since we won't be using the a variable name in any of our functions. And again, we have to make the text bigger. So let's make it 40. Okay. And finally, our solution box where we output the answer, uh, we have to change the tag again. And I'm just gonna simply call it C for our output. And again, it's gonna be blank until the user presses the equal sign to perform the addition operation. And I'll change the font to 20.
Okay. So now we've created a very simple uh, example of what the GUI looks like. Press the save button and save it. Name, let's just call ours adding machine. Okay. And what happens once you save our GUI is you get a .m file created and .m file is where you actually um, write the functions that you need to perform. In our case, all we have to do is add the value in the two boxes and output the value in our solution box. So what we want to do is have the user just push, push the equal sign and the operation gets performed. Um, that means we need to go to where the equal sign is in the .m file and write our addition function inside of the equal sign callback. Okay, callback is just a specific term for where we are supposed to put the functions. <clears throat> so if you look here, uh, we're in the callback that executes on button press in push button one. Okay. So here, the first thing we need to do is get the values of the variables in our two text boxes. Our first variable, if you remember, is a, and uh, we will use the get function to find the value of a, or our text box a, and we want to get the string. So if you remember in the property inspector, the input into this box if we write something into the box, the input is going to be a string. So that's why I have to specify in my get function that I'm looking for a string of variable A, okay? And uh, we'll do the same thing for our second variable that the user can input B. And again, it's going to be input as a string. So we have to specify that we're looking for the string. Now, if you notice, I'm using handles dot a instead of just a and then comma string. This is because this little box here isn't a simple variable. It's an entire graphic object. So the handles is a st structure that stores the actual values a, b, and c inside of it. So that's why instead of calling just calling on the variable name in the get function, we have to call on, a fan, on the handle first and then um, specify our variable name after the period. So handles.a, handles.b. Okay. And then our solution, or C, is just going to be a plus b, right? But the problem is a and b are both strings at this point. So if we have to make sure that we turn them into numbers before we add them, otherwise we won't get the right values. So I'll use stir to num or string to number function to turn them both into numbers. But again, our solution is gonna be displayed in the edit text, which has to be displayed as a string. So we wanna turn our answer back into a string after we've completed our operation, our addition operation. Okay. And now, once we've finished adding, we need to set our final text box, this one, the green one, to our variable C. Okay. So that actually gets displayed. And we can do that using our set function. So we put set and then handles dot C. So again, we need handles because we're putting the variable into an actual graphical object rather than just a variable name. So we put it into the structure handles and our variable name is gonna be C. And uh, it's gonna be stored as a string. And we put the variable or the value in this case C that's going to be stored into our handle. Okay? And that's it.
So now if you save and press run, a very simple GUI pops out. Okay, not very pretty, but very simple. And the user can then type in values and press the equal sign. And you should be able to get the answer output in the solution box. And you can change these numbers to anything you want. And you should always be able to get the right answer. Okay.